The National Black College Alumni Hall of Fame presents our 30th anniversary celebration and induction ceremony featuring the honorees for Chairman's Award, Athletics, Business, Civil Rights, Community Service, Education, Faith and Theology, Government, Law, Arts and Entertainment, Lifetime Achievement, Medicine, and Science. In this segment, we feature Community Service, an actress, an activist, an intellectual, a humanitarian. Elizabeth Amalami is this year's Hall of Fame inductee for community service. She learned the importance of service to others early in life. Born here in Atlanta, Georgia, Elizabeth is the daughter of civil rights activist Hosea and State Representative Juanina Williams. As a young girl, she attended civil rights marches with her father across the South and was one of the youngest people arrested in the civil rights movement. It was the beginning of her commitment to community and service. The pivotal point that started me on my journey to providing community service was my father and my mother because uh, we started by having to give away all our toys at Christmas when I was very, very young. So I always knew that life was about a commitment to community service. Amalami attended Hampton University in Virginia, where she earned a degree in theater arts. She's an award-winning actress with over 60 film, television, and stage projects. We had an extremely special uh, class at Hampton University, and uh, I don't think there's been one that's better since. <laughs> She's also an author of several plays. In 1970, she became the founder of one of Atlanta's earliest performing arts companies called People's Survival Theater and a summer arts camp for at-risk youth. It was about the same time her father, Hosea Williams, started his humanitarian organization, Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. The importance of community. I was just talking to my husband's mother, who's uh, 89 years old. And in their community in Petersburg, Virginia, everyone knew everyone. They had no problem with the hunger or, you know, they fed each other, they took care of each other's children. I think that we're missing that today. Community means that I can tell your kid, hey, uh, you're misbehaving and I'm gonna tell your parents and we're gonna have a talk about that. And the parents don't get upset because they know that you have the same desire for their child to uh, behave and be successful as you would for your own. I'm so honored to be standing here today. And I tell you, Tommy Dorch, Tommy Dorch came and found us, working in the community, doing the what we do every day, rent assistance, utility assistance. We serve over 51,000 people a year. And he watched us for a few months, I guess to make sure we had integrity <laughs> and real compassion. And then he started slowly bringing us out from just sort of being there working to say, look, I want people to know what you do. I want people to know you. I would say to you college presidents that just like you want the STEM courses, science and technology, math and community service must be an integral part of what these young people do and learn. Because to walk with the poor gives them back much more than they could ever give out to the poor. Then they become whole. Then they understand their purpose in life. Then they understand why they have a responsibility. So I thank Tommy for finding us because he trusted and believed in us when many did not. And I will say that I am going on a college tour this year of all HBCUs that I can get into, 
because I want the young people to know, first of all, the civil rights movement was not about black against white. I know just as many whites that died, Uncle Andy, and gave their lives as blacks. So it was about the content of your character, not about the color of your skin. So don't get it mixed up, don't get that twisted. Second, I want them to know you can't just get out there and march. Where's your manifesto? What are you asking for? And who are you asking? Third, I just want them to know that you have to be well read, just like Dr. Franklin said, you have to know who makes the right decisions in order to be a civil rights leader. And I want them to understand, I, I talked to a high school class today, not one of them knew who Hosea Williams was, John. They barely, they said, oh yeah, Andy Young, we know that guy, he, he makes movies. So I want them to understand a lot about our history. And I'm so glad to see my fellow Hamptonian, John Eves, because he and I, he kept the shelters open when they wanted to close them. And I thank you for that. Oh, you at Morehouse? I saw you hanging out at Hampton, though. I also want to say that I'd be nothing without my husband, a famous Omalami, who sits over there and he tries to hide and not be mentioned. So I'm honored to be the mother of the poor. People think when I show up, I got 50 homeless people following me around. I do not. <laughs> but I'm honored that you honor me because I want to know where the money is for the kids we serve every week that can't afford to go to college. It's got to be some money somewhere that I can get for them. So let us not forget why we became who we are is so that we can reach back down that ladder, grab that hand, and pull that brother and sister up with us. Thank you, and God bless you. We hope you've enjoyed this special edit for Community Service. Please visit our website or call us to participate and or sponsor this worthy cause. The 30th Anniversary Celebration and Induction Ceremony. Thank you again from the National Black College Alumni Hall of Fame.